you must have observed drivers pouring water into the car engines when the car engines become too hot. Now why do you think they do so? Well, the drivers pour water into the car engines because water helps to cool down the car engines. So here we can see that water is used as a coolant by the car drivers. This is because of a specific property of a water that is the water has high specific heat capacity. Now, owing to high specific heat capacity, the water can tolerate high temperature. That is, it does not get easily heated up. And for this purpose, water is used as a coolant in industries. So, in various chemical process of the industries, the water is used as a coolant. Now, do you know what finally happens with the water that is used as a coolant in industries? The water that is used as a coolant in industries is finally directly released into the water bodies. In other words, the overheated water is directly discharged into the water bodies. Now this incident of course suddenly increases the temperature of these water bodies. Now, the marine animals like fishes, corals, etc. that are adapted to a particular temperature cannot tolerate this high temperature and they eventually die. In other words, we can also say that this sudden increase in the temperature of water bodies comes almost as a thermal shock to them. Here thermal is related to temperature. So thermal shock means that there is a sudden increase in the temperature of the water bodies that is not tolerable for the marine animals. So these marine animals eventually die. Now the death of marine animals also affects the seabirds that feed on these marine animals. So overall the entire ecosystem gets affected due to this sudden increase in the temperature of the water bodies. Now this sudden and rapid increase in the temperature of the water bodies which is harmful for the environment is known as thermal pollution. So thermal pollution refers to the sudden and rapid increase in the temperature of the water bodies that is harmful for the environment. Now a major source of this thermal pollution as I discussed is the industries that is the overheated water from the industries is released into the water bodies which leads to rapid and sudden increase in the temperature of the water bodies and affects marine life. We shall now discuss in details about different effects of thermal pollution. Look at this picture. This is a view of a canal. Now can you see a green layer floating at the top of this water body? This green layer floating at the top of the water body is nothing but excessive growth of algae in this water body. Now this excessive growth of algae is known as algal bloom. Now what leads to the sudden and excessive growth of algae in this water body? Let's find out. Now algal bloom or excessive growth of algae occurs due to increase in the availability of nutrients in the water bodies. That is algal bloom often takes place in a nutrient rich water. So if the amount of nutrients present in the water bodies increases then we can have 
algal bloom. Now why does the availability of nutrients in water body suddenly rise? Well, if you remember, I mentioned that the industries release overheated water into the water bodies. Now, the solubility of any solvent like water increases with increase in temperature. So, at higher temperature, the water can dissolve more nutrients. So, this overheated water that is released into the water bodies is rich in nutrient. Now, these nutrients help in the growth of algae or in other words, increase in the availability of nutrients leads to algal bloom. Now, this entire situation is known as eutrophication. So, eutrophication is the process in which the water bodies become overly enriched with nutrients that boost the growth of algae. And eutrophication, as I have explained just now, is a consequence of thermal pollution. This is because in case of thermal pollution, there is an increase in the temperature of water bodies. As a result, more nutrients get dissolved in these water bodies, which facilitates the growth of algae and thereby causes eutrophication. Now, apart from eutrophication, there are other effects of thermal pollution. Let us know about them. Now, before we proceed with our lesson, let us try to answer this question. Name the process in which water bodies become overly enriched with nutrients. Is it the process of photosynthesis, eutrophication, weathering or hydration? What do you think? The correct answer is eutrophication. Eutrophication, as I just mentioned, is the process in which the water bodies become overly enriched with nutrients. So, the correct answer is eutrophication. Let us now discuss in details about various effects of thermal pollution. Well, one consequence of thermal pollution as we discuss is eutrophication where the water bodies become overly enriched with nutrients which is not at all favorable for the environment. Now, let us discuss with other effects of thermal pollution. The primary effect of thermal pollution is increase in temperature. This is to say that when the industries release overheated untreated water into the water bodies, it leads to a sudden and rapid increase in the temperature of the water bodies. Now, as a result of this increase in temperature, there is a fall in the oxygen content of the water bodies. This is because we know that due to rapid rise in temperature, the availability of nutrients in the water bodies increases. As a result, it facilitates excessive growth of algae, which is known as algal bloom. Now, these algae use up all the oxygen dissolved in the water. So, the availability of oxygen in the water bodies decrease. Now, as a result of fall in the availability of oxygen, the marine life gets hampered directly. This is because due to insufficient amount of oxygen, the fishes and aquatic plants cannot breathe properly. So, the growth rate of fishes get hampered. Also, the fertility rate of fishes gets affected because due to fall in the availability of oxygen, various internal organs and metabolic activities of the fishes gets affected. So, the fertility rate of fishes also gets affected. Now, decrease in the fertility rate and the growth rate of fishes eventually leads to massive death of fishes. In fact, thermal pollution may also lead to extension of marine life. This is because marine animals and aquatic fishes cannot tolerate the sharp increase in temperature. And this sharp increase in temperature also leads to fall in oxygen content. Now, oxygen is a vital gas for all living organisms. So, fall in the level of oxygen affects marine life directly. As a result, it eventually leads to massive death of fishes. So, this is the pictorial representation of the entire effect of thermal pollution. So, here we can see that thermal pollution is very harmful for the entire aquatic ecosystem. 
so we shall now look for the measures in which we can control thermal pollution well we know thermal pollution is mainly caused when the industries release overheated water into the water bodies so instead of releasing this overheated water directly into the water bodies the industries must look for ways in which they can cool down this water and then release it into the water bodies the first way in which they can cool down water is by installing cooling towers now in these cooling towers a device is fitted which regulate the temperature of the water that is used in industrial processes and after the overheated water is treated in these cooling towers it is then released into the water bodies and then it does not lead to thermal pollution the second way in which thermal pollution can be controlled is by installing spray ponds now spray pond is a type of pond where the overheated water is released into cool air via nozzles or pipes now when this overheated water is sprayed into cool air via nozzles it eventually cools down so this is another way in which industries can cool down overheated water now there is yet another measure in which thermal pollution can be controlled and that is by installing cooling ponds in cooling ponds the overheated water is released on a large pond now since the surface area of these ponds are large so heat dissipation is also more that is more heat is released from the surface of these ponds that is excessive heat is released from the surface of these ponds into the atmosphere so cooling ponds also helps to reduce the temperature of overheated water so by adopting these measures that is by installing cooling towers spray ponds and cooling ponds the industries can regulate the temperature of overheated water before releasing them directly into water bodies so these are the different ways in which thermal pollution can be controlled so in today's video we first understood that as water is used as a coolant in industries it leads to thermal pollution then we eventually learned that thermal pollution refers to rapid increase in the temperature of water bodies which is unfavorable for the entire environment then we also learned about different effects of thermal pollution a major consequence of thermal pollution is eutrophication thermal pollution also leads to decrease in the availability of oxygen in water bodies and eventually it leads to massive death of fishes then we understood different ways in which we can control thermal pollution that is by installing cooling towers spray ponds and cooling ponds in our next video we will discuss about other types of pollution don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now